All right, so I'm recording this episode of Elemental during peak Delhi winters. Now, I know that it never snows over here and it possibly never will, but fingers crossed. But what if it did snow? Yeah, so it's completely unbelievable and you know, it's not true to life because obviously you cannot have snow indoors. But if you look closely, the resolution of your video has dropped from good to potato in just a matter of seconds. Now, this happens because of a very interesting reason that we will be talking about in this episode. And not just that, we will be talking about a lot of other video glitches that happen and that we seem to overlook a lot of times because of the way we just consume media. Now, before we get started, let me take off my jacket because it's not actually that cold. Uh, yeah. Before we get started, let me quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that you're always notified of our latest videos. Let's start with the snow example I just showed you. It's not just snow that actually causes that kind of drop in resolution. It can also be confetti or basically any kind of randomly moving object or a bunch of randomly moving object. But why does it happen? You see, sharing videos at their absolute top quality is painstakingly difficult. If you want to share every pixel of a full HD video shot on a really high quality camera, it would stream at a speed or a bit rate of a gigabit per second. So it's incredibly wasteful to share such high quality videos for streaming platforms as it would drastically increase the amount of data that would be stored on servers. That's why to reduce the bit rate, online streaming platforms use a thing called compression and you see this all the time right like let's take the example of images if you click a photo on your spanking new 108 megapixel sensor 64 megapixel sensor on your smartphone you may see that the images that you took were not the same or didn't look quite the same on social media that's because of image compression it basically works by throwing out small bits of details that wouldn't be noticeable to the naked eye now, every time you repost that image by taking a screenshot or just by saving and uploading it again and again, you will see that its quality will drop. So videos are nothing but a bunch of images shown to you at a certain frame rate so that your eyes can be tricked into thinking that it's a moving image. So the step one of compressing any video is to apply the same image compression that we just talked about a moment earlier. Now, step two is interframe compression. It basically means that you take certain things in your frame that are not moving. So for instance, we have that orange light in the background. We have that stuff in the background. So all of that is not moving. Only my fingers and my head and my body is moving. So what this interframe compression does is that it takes note of all the moving objects and all the things that are stationary, those are repetitive. So it just doesn't use all of that data again and again and again. It just lets it be and it only works around with my moving parts. So uh, in a nutshell, basically image compression is only or video compression is only looking at my fingers, and whenever I move, the pixels are just moved slightly a little bit if it's overlapping the background. And then it'll apply some, uh, you know, image processing or video processing or color processing, and then you get the final result. And that is exactly what interframe compression means. And all of this reduces the size of the video file and also its bitrate to just a few megabits or even kilobits per second. Now here's a live demonstration for you. I'm going to turn down the bitrate from the best possible bitrate just now and then to the lowest possible bitrate, okay? Gradually. So this is the highest bitrate. This is somewhere in the middle. This is the lowest. And this is as low as we can get, all right? So let's turn it all the way back up. All right, now that's a good look. Now let's introduce some snow and some confetti and a bit more snow and a bit more confetti. Yeah, now I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to see me all that well. Neither would you be able to see the frame all that well. Now let's just turn it back down. All right, just, yeah. Okay, now why is this happening? Now when you have a bitrate that is just steady, 
It's mostly focusing on me since I am the one who's moving around. But then when some snow or confetti starts coming in, all of that is being spread out to all of these random particles. So basically all the horsepower initially was being spent on me, but now the horsepower has to be spent on all of these random objects. And that's why you see the drop in resolution and quality. Now let's move on to another interesting glitch. For this, we will have to turn the lights down. Okay, now, right now I only have this key light that is falling on my face and that background light, okay? And now I just want you to focus on that background light while I reduce its brightness a little bit, right? Are you able to see the banding now? There's a very interesting artifact. So if you zoom in over there, and if I increase the contrast all the way up, now you can see color banding. And this is something that is visible all the time in all kinds of videos and all kinds of movies as well that are shown to you in a digital platform. And I'm really sorry for just spoiling it for you because now there's a high chance that you would be able to notice it in every single video or movie or TV show that you see that is set in a dark setting. This happens because of colors, specifically the lack thereof. You see, the colors that you see on your display are shown to you because of a thing called color gamut. Color gamut is basically the total number of colors that your display can reproduce. Now you have three main standards of color gamuts that are being shown to you on the screen right now. In most modern videos, there's a grand total of about 16.7 million possible colors. When you watch a video on a display, your phone or computer takes the digital signal of the video and then converts it into instructions. The instructions then go to the screen and that changes the brightness of each of the millions of red, green and blue lights on your display. Now remember, one pixel is made out of three colored lights red, green, and blue. And a quick plug, I've done an Elemental episode entirely on the different kinds of displays and how displays work. So I really recommend you to go watch that and come back as soon as possible. I know it's, it's not a short episode, but at the end of it, you'll have a much better understanding of what I'm trying to tell you. Anyway, those lights cannot be adjusted to just any brightness. A single bit has data for eight colors, which tells your display to turn the light on or off for a certain color. This means that you have eight possible color combinations, two multiplied by two multiplied by two. It doesn't look all that good. And if you add another bit, you get four options for each color, which means four multiplied by four multiplied by four or 64 colors. This too doesn't look very nice. Your screen needs eight bits per pixel for each color to make things look bearable. All right, and that's exactly why you get 256 shades of each color. And this is a standard that was adopted decades ago, and this is called a software palette. But the thing is 256 shades of colors are also not enough. Let me give you a quick demonstration. This video is rectangular and you have about 1080 pixels this way and 1920 pixels this way. If you have 256 shades of colors, spanning 1920 pixels, you are going to see that some colors are going to overlap. And that's why this color banding takes place. There's a block purple background right now. And now if I turn this into a gradient that comprises all 256 shades of purple, you will observe this artifact. And it looks even worse in videos when you have a dark background because that banding is much more pronounced. Okay, now the lights are back up, so we are going to talk about a different topic. Now, a very interesting thing happened in 2019, all right? I'm a big F1 fan, so I follow F1 on a regular basis, but my favorite team is Ferrari. And before the season started, we saw the new car, the SF90 from Ferrari. Now, from the first look, to a lot of viewers, it seemed like the car was orange, but Ferrari actually cross-confirmed and cross-checked and told us that it was only just using a really deep shade of red. And there were a lot of, you know, conspiracy theories about why the car is orange and not red and a lot of other things. Now, the, the reasons for this ranged from just using a different kind of a lighting during the launch event 
all the way to just a um, voodoo science that doesn't make much sense. But if you look closely during the actual races, during race days and during qualifying and basically anything that was going on on the TV, we saw that the car was still orange. It wasn't red, slightly orange. And I think Ferrari also changed the color a little bit during the course of the season, but it was still orange. And during the Netflix documentary, they color graded the car so that it would look more red to the viewer. Now, this is an interesting thing. Why is this happening? This is happening because of color gamut that I talked about previously in the previous segment. So what is a color gamut? It is basically the, the number of colors a display can show. So we have different kinds of color gamuts, right? We have Adobe RGB, we have sRGB and also DCI-P3. But the most accepted, the most widely used color gamut is the sRGB color gamut. So how do you read a color gamut? If you see on the screen right now, you have a bunch of colors, right? And that weird squiggly look looking shape. And in that you have a triangle. Now that triangle basically shows you the limits of that particular gamut. So anything outside that wouldn't be shown to you. And so it would only be a simulation of that color. So all of those colors that fall outside the triangle, you're not able to see them at the moment because those are just being simulated. And it turns out that the deeper red that Ferrari used in its cars was actually just outside that gamut. And it fell right between orange and red. And there are a lot of other colors as well that we are not able to see on our displays. Like the colors of the years that Pantone just, you know, rolls out every year, that those colors mostly do not fall in the color gamut. So the color of the year 2013, that was emerald green, wasn't possible. Wasn't, it wasn't possible for us to see that color. To sum it all up, it seems counterintuitive to think that modern technology is actually taking us a step back in terms of quality, right? There's compression in videos, there's compression in songs as well. Like Spotify uses compression so that it can deliver millions of tracks to its users, right? And there's also a reason. This very reason is the reason why we still have enthusiasts who collect vinyl records, who, who collect gramophones and listen to the best songs in the best possible quality. But here's the thing, right? Modern technology has made information available to everyone. This information can be in the form of TV series, movies, shows or YouTube videos, the one that you are watching right now, and also songs. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if you have consumed media in its richest content. It matters that you got the message, you got the information. And on that, food for thought. I would like to leave this video and I would love to see you guys in the discussion down below in the comments. Just let me know what you think about it. Do you like quality more or do you like quantity more? All right. And let me also remind you that new elemental videos come out every Sunday at 1 p.m. So do not forget to subscribe to our channel. If this video helped you in any way, if we opened your eyes to the glitches that you have been overlooking all this while, do drop us a like. And for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.